This is Average Joe PT coming to you today. And today I'm going to pull it back a little bit. Last time we talked about DDD. Hope you all love that. All right, subscribe down below. Bring some more friends. Ring the call bell. Today I'm going to pull it back, like I said, and we're going to work on the hip. And today we're going to talk about hip bursitis, also known as trochanteric bursitis. All right, I'm going to give you the ins and outs, some treatments that you can do at home when you're supposed to hopefully get some relief, what the surgeon or the physician might do. All right, and so stay tuned. Hip bursitis, here we go. All right, folks, I got good old hip here. And last time, all right, we talked about that good old disc. And with this trochanteric or hip bursitis issue, it could be mimicked by two other things. One is the degenerative disc issue, all right? It could be referring pain right down into that hip area, right down into that ball socket area. And it might not, be, it might not even be bursitis, but you're getting tenderness along that side, all right? And, and so, and also the second one might be, is it might be just coming from the ball and socket. You might have some arthritis in that hip, and that might be referring all your symptoms down into this area. It has nothing to do with the the actual bursa itself, but you're getting referred symptoms in towards the bursa. So those are two other things that can mimic this bursitis issue. Now, usually bursitis is coming from because you either had a trauma to the side, all right, either or you fell on it or you banged it and, uh, and that got that bursa inflamed. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit, what the heck even is bursa, all right? So let's go ahead and talk about that next. Now, that's what's the bursa. Essentially, I always tell people the bursa Essentially, when it's healthy, it's not a rubber band, obviously, but it's flat and thin like tissue paper like this. Now, it isn't until the thing gets swollen to try and protect you. So, boom, it gets swollen. It's not flat no more. And so now you're dealing with a bursa sac instead of something that's nice and flat. It's taking up more space. It's, it's got all the inflammatory issues going on at that point. Now, the bursa themselves, what they're really designed to do is they're designed anywhere you have like a bony area, they lay flat over the top. Isn't that kind of nice? Because the tendons coming from the muscles have to go across that. Now, you wouldn't want a tendon to go right across the bone. It would rub like rope on, on a piece of metal. That would not be good. And so those bursts are really designed to keep that area where the tendons go over it nice and smooth. And so if they blow up, they get big and turn into a sack, all right, like I showed you. And those tendons now have to go over a stretched area a lot of times you'll get a tendon issue as well as the bursa. So it's usually a two for one deal. Unfortunately, in this case, it's not a good one where you'll aggravate both the tendon and the bursa at the same time. And so you have two ways that can mimic this problem. So you have that disc or you have the, you know, maybe some osteoarthritis in the hip that's giving you those symptoms. And what you can, ha what happens is you have a trauma to it. So, but if you're going in and you're just having chronic bursa issues, it's probably not just bursitis. You probably have something else that's kind of referring into that bursa area. So let's go ahead and we're going to talk about some muscle groups that are in that area that we're going to be able to treat home-wise to see if we can help reduce some of your symptoms. Now, before we get to that, the doctor, what they might do is they might do an injection. And so they'll come and have you lie on your side. And so this is the socket. The ball would be out like this on your side. And so what they'll do is they'll do some, you know, they'll rub the area with some alcohol or iodine to make sure they don't have any bugs in that area that, heaven forbid, you know, keep it nice and sterile. And they're going to find that spot that's tender and they're going to go right to that spot. And they're going to inject the needle down into probably, you know, two, three, four cc's of either combination of steroid and lidocaine to to uh, get the area to reduce pain through the lidocaine and the steroid to reduce the inflammation at that bursa site. And that will be it. That's what they'll do and they'll probably send you out to physical therapy. But I'm gonna give you some treatment ideas that you can do at home. We talk about the muscles when I return. Here we go. All right, folks, now don't pick on me. I'm working on a shoestring budget here, but you'll get the idea. So this red little band is gonna represent your glute medius. Now, the glute maximus muscle is over the top of this. So you'd have to peel back that glute max muscle, that big butt muscle, all right? 
This white little tissue paper is representing of the iliotibial band or what we call the IT band. And then you have your front little blue thing here. This is called your TFL or tensor, tensor fascia lata. And now you know why we call it TFL. Now those things kind of like in a V pattern and they come down and they kind of start to attach to the fascia, okay, and also the iliotibial band. Now the IT band is not a connective tissue. It's more of a ligamentous type tissue. And this runs all the way down your thigh to your knee. Now you can get radiating pain that might be coming right into that where that bursa is from any one of those these two muscle groups. I'm referring all the way down the side of your thigh, as well as a degenerative disc problem or facet joint or osteoarthritis of the hip. So you can see how some of this can be mimicked, but these are the two main muscle groups that we're gonna to want to treat and work on as well as this little IT band. So stay tuned. This is what we can work on at home. All right, folks, here we go. We're gonna give you some treatment techniques that you can do. And the first one we're gonna do is simply is heat. Now, if this has been going on for a while and you just didn't bang this leg or this hip, what you want to do in that case is ice it, 72 hours. Rice, rest, ice, compression, and elevation is what that stands for. Like always, 15, 20 minutes, just don't burn yourself, put it on the hip. Now, this is chronic, which is probably going to be most of my patients and most of the viewers probably. First technique, rolling pin. Some people have a foam roller. I just use a rolling pin. Like I said, this is average Joe, average Joe PT. And we're doing things that you can do out of your own home, not where you have to go to the gym or you have to go to a physical therapy clinic. Simple thing, just kind of gently roll across that entire IT band, iliotibial band that's going to run all the way from this hip. All right, this, this little bony hip all the way down, it passes that knee joint that IT band does. So we're just going to gently roll. It's going to be sore. It's going to be tender. Now after... Maybe heating this area for a good five or 10 minutes, hot, hot water bottle, maybe electric blanket, maybe a hot shower if you're lucky, then come out and just gently, just kind of get in it, roll it. It's gonna be sore, it's gonna be tender, that's to be expected. You're gonna do this for about three to five minutes. All right, really simple. Number one rolling pin. I do, if this thing is sore, you're not gonna be doing the old on top of it like I showed you last time. With the other treatment techniques you're not going to be doing that you're not going to be able to tolerate that so just go at it nice and easy like this pretty simple rolling pin second treatment technique tape 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 baby you know i'm all about the tape and my magic towel so like i said you can get this tape simply on uh Probably could get this off of Amazon, Luco tape or Meccano tape. Now, since this is going on your leg, you're gonna to wanna to do the cover roll, which is the white foam, that, white tape, excuse me, not foam, white tape that comes with it. And how you're gonna apply this? Pretty simple. The whole premise is taking the tissue, the IT band that runs all the way down and shortening it. I did, I went to a course, oh geez, this is probably 10 years ago now. All right, and basically you're gonna take the tight white tape, cover roll, this is just to protect the skin. It doesn't have no tension or anything on it. Put one piece literally right across the whole, the whole band from the, from the knee all the way to the hip. And then you're gonna do a piece of tape this way and a little piece of tape that way. Essentially, it's gonna look like a V or a Y. And what you're gonna do then is take the brown tape and you're gonna pull a piece like the letter V or Y, one direction, same point down at the knee, the next direction. All right, so it's like a letter V or Y, it's gonna look like on your side of your thigh, and then a centerpiece right up the middle, splitting that Y or V, boom, right up the middle is what you want. And so what that's gonna do is unload that tissue. It's not gonna put it on stretch. So that'll be a nice little recovery, like I always say, wear it for a couple days, shower with it and everything, and then take it off. Now, if it gets itchy or scratchy, you take it off immediately. Otherwise, leave it on for a couple days. So you got the roller, got some moist heat. You have the taping technique. So what we're gonna do next 
is just show you some stretches. Now, remember I showed you those two muscle groups that we, I talked about earlier, the glute medius and the TFL. Those are two important muscles because anytime you have any type of hip damage, hip surgery, hip replacements, they tend to get irritated and weak. And so what we're going to do to strengthen in those, two basic exercises. So let's show you the stretch first. The stretch first is pretty simple. Let's just say it's your left side because that's what we've been talking about all right along. Now you can do this in bed. Obviously, if you can't tolerate it on the floor, don't get on the floor, stay in the bed and just do it in the bed, all right? So you're gonna be on your side. Make sure your hips tucked in nice and tight. And all you're gonna do, put that hand on the hip so you're not sagging your hips and you're just gonna lift up, pause and then down. Come up, pause and then down. Second exercise, bend your knees, feet stay together. Open and close, open and close. Next one you can do, keep your knees together, bring your foot up. That's a nice little extra to work the muscles of the internal and external rotators of your hip. So you do about, let's say 15, 20, or until you feel some fatigue in that hip. Those are good, simple strengthening exercises you can do for that hip. Now you could go goo -ga if you wanna hit a third, well, excuse me, a fourth one lying on your stomach and just lifting your leg up, pause, and then back down. That's another one. Or bend the knee. Keep the knee bent. Kick the leg up. Bending the knee isolates just the glutes. It takes the hamstrings out of the equation when you flex that knee. With the knee out straight, it should be a little bit easier because you're using your hamstrings and your glute muscles to lift the leg up. So there you go. There's a little tidbit from you. All right, so that's your strengthening. Stretching. Go back to the left. You're just gonna come gently across the body. All right, you ain't gonna go knee to the shoulder. You could if you wanna do the piriformis stretch too, but you can just come across the body to the side. Now this is with the knee bent. You can go crazy if you're good enough and do it with the knee straight. Your leg, the other leg's out flat, other leg straight. Come across the body till you feel a big pull across the side. Hold for about 15, 20 seconds and do that three or four times. The max stretch is about 30 seconds to a minute. That's the maximum elongation of the tissue that you want. So that gives you an idea of what seconds of why we're doing it. It's not just because we're popping that number out of our head. There's actually some physiological rationale for it. But keep it on the down low, average Joe style, that's what you're gonna do. So you got a rolling pen and some heat, got tape, 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 you got some stretching and you got some strengthening exercises for the IT band bursitis issue. So that should at least get you on your way to recovery. Any comments, leave them down below. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Ring the bell. Bring some new friends. All right, I love, love some comments. And so I think, <coughs> excuse me, I think next time, I think we might talk about some more uh, strengthening exercises if you guys want to do that. I think I might bring some equipment into the action and see what you guys think about that. Maybe we'll go over some more strengthening versus just uh, you know the rationale for a certain type of treatment technique. Maybe I'll go with some core stability over the weekend or some balance. So I'll keep it a surprise for you. All right, let's go ahead. Stay tuned. Okay, folks, so we have some manual techniques, we have some taping techniques, we have some stretching, we have some strengthening. Those are four extra different, excuse me, extra, not only exercises, but techniques that you can do at home to help your symptoms when it comes to this issue. Subscribe down below, bring in the content. You know I've been saying this for the last three, four weeks and I'm gonna keep doing it. I'm practicing what I'm preaching. Leave some comments down below. Please, 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 I just want to hear you all. Make sure you're out there. And for my new subscribers, thank you so much. Keep bringing some more subscribers. I'm going to keep bringing you good, valid information. All right, this is not a reaction video. All right, I'm going to give you some information that you can use or even give to your friends, maybe some talking points. Make you make yourself sound a little bit smarter, all right? I don't mind that. But like I always say, till next time, look up and keep smiling.